Hello miners, most wanted here. Check it out, I have a new ship. John was nice enough to reply to one of my videos about... Um, I think it was the Keep Frosty video where I had mentioned I had the Arcator, I was using it for moving ore, and I was going to use it for moving ore through the MTUs. And he replied that I should check out the Miasmos, and I did. And I'm, I'm glad I did. It's a, a pretty cool little hauler. CCP came out with a range of different uh, Tech 1 haulers, one for each race. And the Miasmos is the Galante variant. And luckily enough, it's the one that I would most likely use. The uh, Miasmos has its own ore hold. Ore hold similar to what a Coveter and a Mackinac have. But in a hauler, it, it has a pretty pretty large ore hold. Uh, the base ship is somewhere the, along the lines of 40,000 M3. And since it's a Galante and I, I can fly transports, I've got Galante Industrial 5, so the ore hold gets bumped up to 63,000. And that's not too bad. I, I can move, I can easily move two MTUs with that, no problem. So uh, the Arcator, I could move all four of my MTUs with three trips. I should be able to move all four of my MTUs with only two trips with the Miasmos. It's not that expensive. It's, it's a Tech 1 variant ship. It's uh, going to be under 2 mil in a market hub. I can show you the fittings for it. you got two high, four mid, four lows, and three rig slots. Um, I like the option of doing a, a cloaky warp. I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a bit, but um, the cloaky warp requires a micro warp here and a cloak. So I've got my improved cloaking device here and I've got a named micro warp on here. So I can do the whole cloaky warp bit. Uh, the trying to shoehorn in a tenonym micro warp on this ship is extremely difficult. I was required I was required to put in some current router rigs which increased my power grid by 10% per mod so I've got two of them on there that brought up my power grid from 150 to 181 based on my skills and I was able to shoehorn in all the rest of the mods after the micro warp and let me show you some of the other mods I have on here. I've got a adaptive shield and vulnerability I've got a Tech 2 medium shield extender. I really wish I could have fit a large, but there's just no power grid for it. And then I've got a Thermocamp and a damage control. So that's kind of my shield tank there is, is these three shield mods and the damage control. I, I didn't put any EM resistance on. I think the idea behind the tank was uh, I was trying to prevent Callus from ganking it. And if a catalyst did come to the belt and did immediately engage and I was able to get a micro warp cycle off before they scrammed the ship then I think it coasts through that micro warp cycle or at least I would have some velocity when it when it came to you know them shooting and I'm coasting out of my micro warp cycle I'll, I'll be pulling range while I'm doing it which should hopefully nerf some of the damage that they're putting into the ship and if that happens, then I think I could survive a single catalyst, but it would be iffy. Um, so I don't have a lot of hopes and dreams about this hauler being tankier or the ability for the hauler to, to hold its own or anything like that. Um, but, you know, uh, if, if it can survive a, a catalyst kink, I would be surprised. Now. Uh, I also have a pair of inertia uh, stabilizers here. That's going to increase, um, sorry, it's going to decrease my alignment time. So if I come out of warp at my MTU and I align back, I could get to warp faster. If I warp to um, a belt and I'm trying to burn out to where I want my MTU to be, then I could burn out there, drop it, and leave quicker. 
I can get off of Stargates quicker because my alignment time is reduced. So all these good things uh, make it easier when, when you've got some inertia stabilizers in there. I also have an overdrive injector, which usually is a dumb thing to put on a, an industrial ship because overdrive injector increases your your core speed but it nerfs your cargo hold so it's going to reduce my cargo hold by 20 percent but it's going to give me 12 and a half percent more to my velocity and that's just that's not just the standard velocity it's also the micro velocity so um, I'll be able to run uh, I'll be able to get further down you know the road with a single micro warp cycle because I've got the overdrive injector which means I'll have to run the I won't have to run the micro warp as much which I'll, I'll be able to keep things like a vulnerability field running if I felt like I needed to run it maybe there's a spawn in the asteroid belt and I, I don't want it to bash down my shield tank at all or anything um, and the reason why it's not a bad thing to put on a miasmos is because uh, this thing only nerfs the cargo hold and it has zero effect on the ore hold so I'm not gonna it's not gonna reduce the amount of ore I could potentially stick into my ore hold it's only gonna affect the cargo hold capacity which isn't much to begin with if I turn this off you can see 550 is default it gets dropped down to 440 that's fine because the only thing I would potentially put in the cargo hold of the miasmos are going to be my four MTUs. If I decide to pick up and move my MTUs, then I might decide to use the Miasmos rather than my Vexor, which my Vexor and the Miasmos are roughly the same speed right now. Um, so, because yeah, they both use 10 of them afterburners, or micro warps, and I guess the, their mass must be pretty similar. So, um, that's the fit. I was thinking about adding another uh, rig in here, maybe something shield based, either an extender or something that increase the EM resistance, but I haven't quite figured that out yet. It's probably going to be extender, but we'll see. So now I'll go ahead and I'll show you how the whole cloaky warpy thing works when you're, when you're flying in something that can't really fit a covert cloak. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to simulate what it's like to warp off of a Stargate to an outgate. Now to do it I need to be completely stopped because when you jump through a gate you're normally cloaked and you're stopped. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to warp to a bookmark and you'll see how quickly um, I can get to warp. The key here is I normally would be cloaked right now and then I'm going to align I'm going to hit my cloak again um, I'm going to hit the cloak on my ship so I'll recloak before I fully decloak and then uh, I'll hit the micro warp cycle uh, one cycle and then I'll, I'll be actively aligning while cloaked I'll turn off the micro warp before the cycle is complete and then when my ship is up to speed I will turn off my cloak and then the speed that I need to be while I'm decloaked with the mic warp off, I'll already be at, so I'll immediately warp. And the speed that you need to be at when you can warp is always uh, three quarters of your max speed. Now, while my mic warp is off and I'm decloaked, three quarters of my max speed is right around 152, 153 meters per second. Now, if I turn the mic warp, it suddenly became three quarter speed is 790 but remember I'm worried about my speed when I am uh, decloaked and my mic warp is turned off so what I want to do is I want to use the mic warp to get me well beyond that speed or at least up to that speed so that when I do decloak then I can warp immediately so what I want to do is I'll show you what I'm talking about um, the cloak is going to nerf my total max velocity by 75% so it won't be quite as fast as, as it is right now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and I'll show you all right so I'm cloaking oh pff, stations in the way all right, I'll, I'll just show you how it works first let me get away from the station real quick 
and then I'll show you what I mean. Okay, now I can show you what I meant. So I turn on the micro warp, and remember I need to get to 152 meters per second. And 152 meters per second while I'm cloaked is right about there. Right about there. So if I can get my ship to that speed while I'm cloaked, then when I decloak and I hit warp, then I'll go immediately to warp. So if you're watching that, then what I'll do is uh, it'll just take me a minute. I, I need to wait for the timer. There's like a, a 30 second or so timer in between how often I can recloak. All right, so we're going to assume that I'm I just jumped through a stargate and I'm cloaked. I'm going to right click on my overview. I'm going to I'm then going to click al align to. I'm going to cloak. I'm going to hit my mic warp, and then I'm going to turn off the mic warp. Decloak. Warp. Warp drive active. And then, as soon as my decloak turns off, I'm at warp. Now, what this does for you is, when you're moving from gate to gate in warp, when you come out of warp, then you can immediately jump. There's no delay. But there is a delay when you get through that gate and you need to get to the next one. There's a delay when it, when you're trying to get to warp, and if you're if during that delay you're decloaked, then ships can scan your cargo hold. If they can scan your cargo hold, and the value of your cargo hold is worth well more than the ISK value of a ganking ship they would need to use to gank your hauler, then you run the risk of being ganked. So the Miasmos only has 11,000 effective hit points. It could be technically it could be destroyed with a lot of different ships, but one of the most common would be a tier 3 battleship, most commonly a tornado. A tornado can do something along the lines of about um, 9,000 per volley. And if a pair of tornadoes were out there, then uh, it would well exceed my effective hit points, and they would be able to gank me. Now, the cost of those tornadoes, depending on the, the fits and the skills and everything, um, could be upwards to about 350 mil or 400 mil. Now, if, if I was moving something around like that was worth a billion esque in a Miasmos or, or some other hauler with low effective hit points, then I would become a potential gank for a pair of tornadoes that might be sitting on the gate. Uh, the way they're going to know to target me is the gate prior is going to have a frigate or a destroyer with mods to scan the cargo of my ship. They say, okay, well, this guy's got a billion isk in his cargo. He's in the Miasmos. He should have somewhere along the lines of 10,000 M3 or effective hit points. You're going to need two tornadoes. So then two tornadoes will fly to the Stargate, wait for me to land, wait for me to jump through to them, and then wait for me to warp to the next gate. And if I'm not using a cloaky warpy trick, then they'll be able to lock me before I get to warp because it's going to take about 10 seconds for you to get to warp with these things. So you would use this trick when you're moving through high sec to a market hub with an awful lot of ISK sitting in your cargo hold. So let me show you one more time. What, we, what you would do is you're going to align to cloak warp. Uh, mic warp, and then you're going to turn off the mic warp, turn off the cloak, and then initiate warp. Warp drive active. Now it's going to take a little bit of time for you to get used to the whole combination of aligning and turning on your cloak and turning on your mic warp. If you do it wrong, then it's high sec. Someone might be able to scan you. You could be paranoid. You could dock up for a bit. It's no big deal, but if you're good at it, then uh, you could go gate to gate to gate through those systems that are commonly filled with those that like to gank haulers. And easiest way is, of course, to go to dot land and look at ship kills. Usually, the routes between market hubs are the ones that you're going to have to worry about, or usually one or two jumps out of a, a market hub would be where you'd want to worry about. 
Mad Madamir, that's one of the biggest ones in the game. That's in between the Jita and, and the Mar Market Hubs. So you'll want to just keep practicing. Line 2, Cloak, Micro Warp. I'm still not even good at this with this particular ship. Turn off the Micro Warp. And then you just have to find the right time. And if you Warp noticed, I turned off the Cloak when I hit that 152 meters per second. And that's when I wanted to turn off the Cloak. I would still get a little bit of speed from the Micro Warp as it completes its cycle. So that's some of the delay, but um, if you take your time and you and you practice, then you'll get it down and you'll be virtually unlockable. They won't be able to lock you when you come out of warp and jump because you warp won't be, drive, you know, active. there's just not enough time to get any information from a ship. And then, of course, you, they won't be able to lock you getting off of the Stargate either, so you, you'll be able to move a fairly large amount of ISK around without worrying about uh, being cargo scanned. Now you can't do this with every hauling ship, especially if you don't have uh, enough of propulsion skills uh, and enough of the navigation skills to make it happen. But hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll try this, you'll figure out if you do or don't have the skills. Some ships are also easier because of their default um, Docking permission requested. velocity modifiers Docking are accepted. better or worse. So if you're trying a ship, something like a Badger Mark III, it might be a lot more difficult than, say, a Badger. Because the Badger is smaller and probably going to have a better alignment time than a Badger Mark II, and, and so on. Um, I could see the Bestower having the problem, but the impel not so you know try different ships if you if you're having a hard time with it making it happen so that's the miasmos pretty nice ship decent sized cargo hold for moving around some mtus a huge huge ore hold if you've got industrial 5 you're you're sitting at 63000 m3 and uh, it's tech 1 so it's cheap you can fit a micro warp and a cloak on it then you could do the cloaky bit uh, although for the Miasmos it's not really necessary because you're moving raw ore around, but you can use that trick for any hauler and you don't have to worry about being cargo scanned. And um, yeah, nice little ship. I want to I want to thank John for cluing me in on it, and I'm definitely going to continue to use this for my uh, mining. So thanks for watching, guys. And if this video was all helpful, useful, or entertaining, then please like the video. If you have any questions or comments about what we cover, then go ahead and leave it in the video. And thanks for watching. You guys have a very good day.